Okay, uh, a bit more then on personnel and the uh, controls and safeguards that you need. Um, and particularly today, employment agreements. Uh, you, you need to have the agreement of the employee, you know, explain to the employee what the rules are, what the policies are, what the, uh, uh, what is expected of them. And, um, I, I'm not quite sure if I, uh, uh, dealt with this when I was talking about policy in general, but you have to have, uh, some indication, you know, if, if there's going to be a legal situation. And remember, an awful lot of these cases, um, you know, it, it may seem just like a, uh, you know, a regular issue, a, a you know, some kind of an incident, uh, initially, um, but, you know, if, if there's a possibility that it's going to end up in court, you've got to be able to prove what you did, um, what actions you took, uh, how you pursued the situation, what you did to rectify it. Um, I, I unfortunately have been, uh, uh, not a subject to, but associated with an institution uh, that was uh, the subject of a lawsuit and lost, and deservedly so, because even though they did take some steps in terms of talking to people, they didn't document anything, and they, they could not prove what they did, what their attitude was, uh, what their position was in in respect, and, and um, unfortunately, uh, so, you know, the losing side in the lawsuit uh, made the, the statement and sort of backed up by the fact that nothing actually happened to them, that this organization did support them. And as I say, that was on the losing side, and so the, the organization itself uh, became uh, it, liable for uh, the damages, some of the damages in, in the lawsuit. So, you know, remember, you have to be able to prove. You have to be able to document. And uh, part of that is the employment agreements, uh, which may stipulate that uh, the employee understands that there's, you know, there are policies and that sort of thing. But some of them may actually have to be... Um, for example, um, giving employees actual tests, actual exams, quizzes that they have to pass, uh, and and they you know have to pass them on the basis of having read the policy documents and understanding what the policies are before you actually give them their passwords on the system and, and other kinds of access and privileges. So. Um, what is covered in non-disclosure, or sorry, in, in uh, employment agreements? Well, uh, non-disclosure is, is one thing. What do you learn? Again, I had uh, some, I have had to sign some really interesting non-disclosure agreements in my time. Um, uh, one company, um, I wanted to uh, help them out. I, I was, you know, hired on uh, managing their uh, technology. Um, I the, it was a fairly specialized technology, but fortunately, I knew the uh, types of skills that they needed, and I knew people who had those those very specialized skills. But I couldn't get anybody to sign on. I couldn't get anyone to. Uh, uh, come and work for these people because they had this extremely draconian non-disclosure agreement that basically said that, you know, all the skills, all the knowledge that these people had acquired, they couldn't actually use for anybody else after they had worked for this one company. It was really badly written. And, un well, fortunately, unfortunately, whatever, I had not signed that agreement. I had signed a different non-disclosure agreement that when I came to, to work for them, and um, the thing was that it only said that I I couldn't uh, tell anyone 
what I learned from the company. And the thing was that I knew about their technology. I knew what their technology had to be before I even came to work for them. So I, you know, I had no problem signing that non-disclosure agreement. The only thing that I couldn't tell people was that senior management in that company were complete idiots. However, um, anyways, uh, so non-disclosure agreements, you know, make sure that it's realistic. I, again, going back to what we said about the policy, don't be too draconian about it. You know, if you get people to... Um, ignore uh, some of the aspects of, of the non-disclosure agreement, they're going to ignore all of it. Um, system usage. What are they allowed to use the system for? What is the system for? You know, typically, of course, we, we say, you know, that the system is meant for uh, our employees to do our jobs. Okay, good, fine. You know, um, personnel security uh, issues there may be covered in some of the employment uh, stuff. Now, just a, a few additional uh, factors here. When we are dealing with employment, um, as somebody is promoted up the chain, uh, gets more responsibility, um, we are going to be wanting further checks on them. Um, uh, oh, and, and please, I mean, I, I know you are the technical people and you know far more about security than human resources does, but human resources knows far more about personnel than you do. So um, when hiring, you know, do coordinate very closely with human resources. They, uh, you know, they do know things that you don't know. Um, uh, what do we do about the the equipment that we gave them. I, again, um, uh, one of the people that I worked with, he, he told me about one job where uh, he, um, uh, somebody was leaving the company, was, you know, an amicable separation, There's no particular problems here, and his boss said, oh, by the way, you know, uh, uh, make sure that you get back his, his laptop and his key fob and uh, his cell phone. And fortunately, uh, the, the guy that I knew uh, didn't relay this verbatim. He said, uh, you know, oh, Bob, uh, you know, when on your last day, you know, bring in the stuff that you've been issued. And Bob came in with an entire crate of stuff that obviously nobody realized that he had ever been issued with. Uh, so, you know, know what the inventory is, know uh, what you should be getting back, you know. Have proper termination procedures and I have had some really weird experiences with termination procedures in in one company um, they uh, they closed out a department and they took everybody out of that department didn't even let them pick up their jackets you know it took them down to the front entrance and and booted them out of the building and and said you know if there's any personnel uh, personal items that you want back uh, you know uh, may you know give us specific details, describe them, and and make an appointment to come back, and and we'll you know give them to you. I it was it was bizarre. Now this same company, when I was terminated, um, they made a real fuss about changing my password. The um, uh, systems person in, in my area came bustling in very officiously and uh, told me to uh, bring up the uh, uh, change password function, which I did, type in my password, which I did, and then she typed in a new password and, and you know, that changed my password and, and off we went and, and she was she was done and, and that, was, that was the end of things as far as she was concerned. Unfortunately um she didn't uh, check the fact that on my desk was a, a microcomputer at the time. This was not mm, it, her field of expertise. She didn't realize that I actually had two terminal emulation windows running on this particular machine still attached to their mini computer and active. 
and the fact that she changed the password on on that you know uh, hardware terminal really didn't matter I, I still had access and uh, in the few hours that I had before I actually left uh, I was strongly tempted to go and uh, do something you know send send an email telling people no you you didn't actually boot me off the system <laughs>